In the previous video, we did a very high level overview of how Langchain and different LMs, in this case ChatGPT, can interact with our relational database to answer certain questions. This time it's a deeper deep dive as we see the exact prompts that Langchain exchanges with uh, ChatGPT and how ChatGPT decides to make use of different functions that Langchain provides. And jumping ahead, I must admit, I'm not impressed. It's all very basic. We're still working with prompts like Langchain under the hood tries to, to generate the right prompt. Results are not deterministic, but hey, that's just me. Maybe I'm being too negative. Decide for yourself. Let's get right into it. As in the previous tutorial, we'll start with a very basic create SQL query chain. It takes a question as an input and returns a query that it thinks would, would answer our question most precisely as a response. So we run that through and, and we're still working with the Chinook database, by the way. Take a look at my previous video. There I described the, the structure of this database. And if we ask uh, Langchain and ChatGPT, in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo, what is my data about? It will return us the query that it thinks the best answers the question. And now the way we'll, we'll ask Langchain to output all the information that will provide us the, the intimate details is setting Langchain debug setting to true. Um, you, you might have noticed in many of the Langchain tutorials that they, they set the verbose attribute here of LM or chain to true, but the verbose attribute is not really helpful because it doesn't go all the way to the prompt level. And I think that's because Langchain doesn't want you to see the prompts. It just tells you what Langchain does. And that is not very helpful from my experience. So yeah, I I would recommend if you, if you need to understand what's happening, set the Langchain debug parameter to true. And then we do the exact same thing. So we pass on the question, what is my data about? It will output a lot of information. You see some code going on here and all of that. So I parsed some of it. So the most helpful bits for you here. Um, so to start with, Langchain goes into our database and looks for the tables that are present in the database we pointed it to. So in this case, in this database, it lists the tables first and then it lists the DDLs, so the structure of the tables. And then for each of the tables, it lists first three rows. So, so it gets an idea of what's there. And then it generates this horrendous prompt that gets passed to ChatGPT. Given the input question, first create synthetically correct Postgres query to run, the look at the results of the query and return the answer to the input question. Then it sets up this kind of like conversation structure that it expects ChatGPT to pick up and that it appends all this table information and the rows information that it fetched from our database. And then ChatGPT reads this horrendous prompt and it goes further because here I just cut it to the first three tables. It actually passed the, the, the entire table set, which I think is close to 15 tables. And then ChatGPT reasons about that and outputs a Postgres query, which then Langchain passes back to us. Now that is a very simple example that already gives you an idea that under the hood there is no magic happening. Langchain simply queries for the tables that are available in the database and then leaves out all the reasoning to the chat GPT and chat GPT being very smart. It figures out what to do with those table structures and kind of data format. Now let's move on to a more sophisticated case. According to Langchain, the preferred way of interacting with the database is by using SQL agents. Here, I'll walk you through the different parameters we'll pass on to the SQL agent and explain why it makes sense and so you could also understand what other options there are. First is the choice of the model. Here we specify GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613, which is meaningless, but if you look up the documentation, it will tell you that it was fine-tuned for working with functions. Meaning that if you have a question and that you have also a list of functions which may be helpful in answering your questions. Then this model is good at picking up the, those functions and 
making use of them while answering your question. Uh, then we pass on so-called SQL database toolkit that comes from LangChain and that is essentially a, a set of the functions that LangChain has that it can run against our database. It has a function, a description, a name, and it has functions like, hey, list the, the tables in our database or list the columns and data types that are present in each of our tables. So those are the functions uh, that reside in this SQL database toolkit. We set it to false, it's useless, and then we specified an agent type. Agent type is basically, you give a hint to LangChain how it should operate under the hood, so basically how it should be working with the prompts and the responses it gets from, from the LLM. So in our case, it's OpenAI functions. And if you, if you go and read the docs, there are different agent types. The one we're using is OpenAI functions, and it's made to work with the models that were fine-tuned to detect when a function should be called and respond with inputs, blah, blah, blah. So basically, that's the agent that should be used with this model because it was fine-tuned to work with functions. So that's how it all comes together. One more thing I forgot to mention is that when LangChain calls OpenAI API, it makes use of the completions endpoint. And the completions endpoint takes as one of the parameters an array of functions. And this is exactly where this SQL database toolkit fits. So it will basically pull the functions it has and pass it on in this functions array. Let's see how it's, it's done under the hood. Now we instantiate that and then we set the debug parameter to true. And, and ask the question we asked in the previous video. So what is my data about? Very simple question. It produces a ton of output, which is quite tricky to read, but here is the gist. So it says that you're an agent designed to interact with the SQL database, and then given an input question, create a synthetically correct PostgreSQL query to run. And then it lists our question, what is my data about? And then it passes on a list of functions that it got from this SQL toolkit from LangChain. Here are all of our functions. It has a name, it has a description, it has parameters it takes. And that is the prompt that is being passed on to OpenAI API. And then the response that comes from OpenAI is the name of the function it thinks that needs to be used. In this case, it came back as a SQL DB list tables. And this is exactly what then LangChain executes on our end. So it queries for tables that are available in our database and comes back with this list of tables. Then it goes back to LLM one more time and it gives the exact same prompt that we have a question and we have the functions but with an addition of this dictionary now we let openai know that one of the functions namely this one sqldb list tables was run and this is the response that we received the rest is pretty much the same. Also in the first query, we we're giving a hint to ChatGPT that, that maybe we need to look at the tables present in the database. So on the second iteration, we already give, give it a hint that, hey, we run that function and this is the list of tables that we receive. Then what OpenAI comes back with is it says you should also run the this function, SQLDB schema function, for each of these tables, meaning that basically ChatGPT reasons that, okay, now I know the list of the tables, now I need to know the schema of the tables. LangChain does that, it has the tool to do that, basically look up uh, the schema of the table, and then it generates yet another iteration of a prompt to OpenAI. So this we already saw, and then we said that we ran that function and that was the output, basically the list of tables. And then 
we say that we ran another function, here is the function, with a huge output, but basically that function name was SQLDB schema. I cut it for, for simplicity here. So also hinting ChatGPT, okay, you recommended us to run a function. We did run a function, and this is what it returned. And the rest is the same. We still, we always also pass a list of functions that we have in our toolkit. And then after this third iteration, and then and only then does ChatGPT get back to us with a recommendation saying that, okay, I, I, I now know the tables that reside in your database. I know their schema. And now I can infer what this data is about. And it says, well, based on the tables, it appears that the data is about a music store. To sum it up, we went under the surface of Langchain and you saw that under the hood, it does multiple round trips between some internal calls to the database, then asking help from LLM, and then in the end, all of that is expressed in a prompt. Um, in no way, I think that it will be useful in even six months. As I mentioned, Langchain framework is changing literally every day. But it does give you a good idea of how tools like Langchain, and I promise you there'll be many more coming out in the next years, interact with the database. Hope it was a useful video. Let me know if there are any questions, there is anything could help you with that will serve me as an idea for the next videos. Have a good day.